Back in 1982, history was made by the classic film Gandhi. Uh, no, not for winning an insane eight Oscars, including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Screenplay, and Best Actor for Sir Ben Kingsley. But at a whopping three hours and 11 minutes in length, it was the last Hollywood film to feature an intermission. If you don't count Quentin Tarantino manufacturing one into his Hateful Eight film. Anyway, the intermission used to be commonplace in movie going, but now most people under 60 years old who go to the movies have probably never experienced an intermission at the theaters. So I thought we would take a couple of minutes to talk about movie intermissions, why we had them, why they went away, and the main reasons I think it's time to bring them back again. Now, intermissions initially came about because they were an absolute necessity. Back in the early 1900s, physical movie reels only lasted about 10 to 20 minutes before the next physical reel had to be loaded onto the projector. This was time consuming and thus, a break or intermission would occur to allow the audience to stretch their legs, use the bathroom, and grab a snack while the reels were being loaded. Now eventually, with the advancement in projector technology and the desire by movie theater owners to squeeze in as many screenings per day as possible, intermissions began to be phased out of movies until finally meeting their end with the aforementioned Gandhi film back in 1982. So why is it time to bring them back? Well, there are a number of huge practical benefits to bringing back intermissions. And the reality is, intermissions fit better with our natural viewing habits than not having intermissions. Let's start with practicality. In 2023, we had films like The Incredible Oppenheimer at a massive three hour runtime. Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon at three hours and 26 minutes. Even the latest Mission Impossible movie was two hours and 43 minutes long. As a matter of fact, when you calculate the runtime of the top 10 movies of 2023, it comes out to an average of two hours and 23 minutes per film. To put that into context, that's nearly 30 minutes longer than the films of 2020 and nearly 35 minutes longer than the movies of the 1990s. Movies, at least some of them, are getting longer, and in today's world of snacking, drinking, cell phones, and other factors, it's getting harder and harder for some people to sit and watch an entire film without any interruption. Now, for many moviegoers today, after paying 15 bucks to see a movie, they have to miss a part of the movie because they need to run and go to the bathroom. If you're getting hungry or thirsty, the only way to satisfy those cravings is to get up and actually miss out on a part of the film, maybe an important part of the film. And then even if you stay seated for the entire film, you run the risk of being distracted by the people walking in front of you to run to the bathroom, the annoyance of people taking out their phones during a movie and other distractions. While an intermission may not completely eliminate these problems, it will certainly reduce them. People can eat and drink to their heart's content knowing that an intermission is coming up so they don't have to miss out on a part of the film to run to the bathroom. You won't be bothered by those people doing the excuse me, excuse me walk of shame as they shuffle in front of you to go relieve themselves so they don't piss their seats. People will be less tempted to check their phones in the middle of a film if they know that a quick break is coming up. People will talk less, at least a little less, when they know that a break is coming where they can talk to their friends about scenes in the film or theories about what may be coming up next. The intermission allows parents to call and check in with the babysitter. It offers a chance to get up and stretch your legs in those particularly long marathon movies. I'm looking at you, Martin Scorsese. It gives movie theaters a chance to make much needed revenue at the concession stands. And I would submit that an intermission adds to the event feeling of a movie. Now, when you bring up the topic of an intermission in long movies, some people will inevitably say that it ruins the movie, that any sort of break or stoppage of a movie pulls them out of the film and lessens the overall impact. But the actual data from studies show the opposite is actually true. Multiple studies have shown that being engaged in almost any activity for one or two hours, stuff like studying, listening to lectures, or even watching a movie, causes us to begin to lose focus. This is why Cornell University suggests taking quick breaks to regain focus. Cornell Health wrote the following. Research shows that taking purposeful breaks anywhere from 5 to 60 minutes to refresh your brain and body increases your energy, productivity, and ability to focus. Find activities that give your mind a break and allow you to breathe deeply, laugh, or move your body. These kinds of activities will help you re-energize and refocus. Huh. It sounds a lot like an intermission, but here's the thing. Studies show that people will naturally take viewing breaks when watching movies and TV shows from home anyway. 
In a recent survey, over 86% of people who watch movies at home, either on physical media or streaming, say they will at some point or multiple points pause the movie to either use the bathroom, get a snack from the kitchen, respond to a text message, or other factors. As a matter of fact, even though streaming services offer us uninterrupted, ad-free viewing experiences, a growing number of people today are opting for tiers with commercial breaks because they just don't think it's a problem to have commercial breaks, even though it only saves a couple of dollars a month. For example, Netflix reports that 30% of new subscribers are opting for the ad-supported tier. Now, that 30% number goes up to 40% on Disney+. Plus. It gets even higher when you look at Hulu, that's at 58%, and a staggering 69% of new subscribers to Peacock are signing up for the ad-supported tier. The data shows that despite what some people will say, taking short breaks in viewing does not significantly alter or hinder the viewing experience. And as a matter of fact, short breaks in viewing actually increases our ability to focus on the stuff we're watching. Listen, there is a reason other forms of live entertainment, like some concerts and Broadway shows, take intermissions. And never once have I ever heard anybody complain that the intermission ruined their enjoyment of Hamilton. So... Do I think all movies should have intermissions? No. Like I said, only exceptionally long movies, I don't know, say two and a half hours or longer should have them. But the benefits are indisputable. It will reduce, not eliminate, in-theater distractions like people checking phones, talking and walking in and out of the theater. It will prevent people from having to miss parts of the movie that they pay to see just because they have to go use the bathroom. It will help audiences maintain their mental focus on the movies we're watching. And for the theaters, it will increase revenue as more people have the opportunity to go and purchase drinks and snacks. Now look, before we end, I should probably take at least a moment to point out one major drawback of an intermission. It adds to the length of a movie's presentation time, thus increasing the chances that a movie may not be able to have as many screenings on a single day in a theater. This might be true, but I would contend three things. Number one, an additional 10 minutes, most of the time, will not be the make or break factor on if a theater can squeeze in an extra screening per day. Number two, the extra revenue from the concession stands during the intermissions will more than make up for the few rare occasions that it does. And number three, if you're really concerned about the overall presentation time, how about this? Reduce the 30-minute pre-show of trailers and commercials down to 20 minutes, and you immediately gain back those 10 minutes for the intermission. Guys, it's not rocket science. So let's all go to the lobby and get ourselves a treat. It's time to bring back the intermission for long movies, because at the end of the day, it'll just plain help us enjoy them more. My name's John Campia, and thanks a lot for checking this out.